On this episode of the Film Optics Podcast, we're going to be talking about the new mutants. There's a lot of uh, news, Comic-Con news out there for you guys. And we're also going to be talking about Donald Glover is going to be returning as Lando Carizian. So let's jump in. everyone and welcome back to film optics brought to you by the drive-in podcast network where we bring you the headline hot takes of entertainment news each and every single week i'm your host christian and today as always we're going to be talking about the world of film tv and everything pop culture related and as always i'm joined by my good friend and my co-host Devin. how are you doing today man how's your week been it's, it's been a slow one it's been an average week. I have some possible good news for you. Ooh. This past, uh, this past weekend, yeah, I tried White Claw for the first time. Ooh, he tried it. He tried it. Which flavor did you try? Uh, there, there was a variety pack brought yeah. over to my apartment. So I tried all <laughs> four of those. Did your parents bring it? <laughs> no, actually, uh, I actually had a lady friend over and she brought Ooh. it. Ooh, nice, nice. I feel it. What, what, what'd we, you think? we downed the whole 12 pack. Of course, of course. How'd you think? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming you liked it, or unless there wasn't any other alcohol in the vicinity. It depended on the flavor. I did like the, yeah. the lime flavor. I thought that was, like, pretty good. It was like if Sprite was left over in a car for a little bit, <laughs> lost a little bit of its flavor, but, but still drinkable. That nice, flat fa- flavor. <laughs> mm. Day old warm sprite. <laughs> Grape, yeah, grapefruit man. was odd. Yeah, there a lot of their um a lot of their flavors are hit or miss. I will say I think Bud Light Seltz is a little bit better, to be honest. Just a little bit better. Um, but I I'm glad glad hey, ain't 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 no laws without drinking claws, baby. <laughs> that, that hundred calories, that's the best part. It, it, that is, no is, exactly a no regret do honestly imagine if this imagine if like these bud light seltzers like these hard seltzers came out when we were in college like it, it it would be insane for college kids but they are a little bit on the expensive side yeah so so it's Good yeah thing i didn't buy it oh there you go hey Devin knows how to uh finesse <laughs> oh man Ed, well, that, Ed, that, that was a nice little story. But um, uh, before we begin today's uh, topics, you can listen to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, Red Circle, TuneIn, Pandora, and iHeartRadio. So we're available around the world. Every single podcast platform you can think of, not including SiriusXM, unless there's other podcasts. I think we're on Podbean still. Which blows my mind. Sure. Because we don't we don't have well like our host is Red Circle. Pod, Podbean is not Podbean's like is, is like a, a podcast host. But from what I've seen from our analytics, we're still on Podbean. And I got rid of that account like ages ago. Which is very weird. Just weird. Yeah. But uh, let's just start getting into some comic book news today. Uh, no little intros here or there. I kind of just want to go through it. I'm still playing around with them anyway. Um, meeting up with one of my friends to uh, see if we can get some nice, uh, nice little uh, video game uh, intro for our podcast as well. Uh, going to collaborate with him on that, so that would be a lot of fun. Uh, so, do you <laughs> do you want to take this first comic book news story or? Should I? Because there's been so much, and I think new... Um, there's a recent development. Yes, there's a recent development. <laughs> but you, go ahead. Take it away. <laughs> well, there was a possibly fake New Mutants trailer revealed on uh, online, what was it, yesterday? And the trailer yeah. had a rumored Hulu release date of September 4th, or Disney Plus. Yeah, Disney Plus. Right. And some people thought it was fake. Some people thought it was real. Jeremy Conrad thought it was real because there was like new footage in it that was never seen before. So he was all on the real train. 
Of course. But then today, breaking news. <laughs> They're staying in theaters. Oh. August 28th. Apparently. <laughs> apparent, apparently. Because there's a little um, picture around uh, a foot on Twitter that says in theaters August twenty tw- in theaters August twenty eighth twenty twenty. So it is very it's weird because there's Comic Con information coming out like today at like five Pacific time, I believe five p.m. I think we're about. Two hours away from that, so I'm, I'm assuming this is just information that's being leaked. So I believe, and there's also Justice Con that's coming out. Uh, that's going to be this weekend. I wanted to touch on that, but did, have you heard anything about that? Because it was kind of new, uh, new to me before. Justice I didn't really. Con? Yeah, never uh, heard of it. So. Uh, go ahead and you take the next news story and I'll try to bring up Justice Con and then we'll get into like the Comic Con news here in a bit. Kevin Feige's oh. in the news again. Our boy Ooh. Kevin Feige. Looks like he is attempting to bring the Illuminati into the MCU. Very, mm. very intriguing. Basically, the Illuminati is kind of like a underground task force type group in the Marvel comics of... Some of the smarter characters they have, just they get their brains together and work on things that are important. Um, okay. It'll be interesting to see how he builds it up. Let's see. One one pairing potential group here they have is Iron Man. I don't think that'll work out. Uh, they got Doctor Strange in here, Reed Richards, mm. Namor, Professor X, and Daredevil. So. Ooh. It's a very powerful group. Obviously, you can't have Iron Man in there, but <laughs> you got Doctor Strange, then you might have Reed Richards, might have Namor. We'll see. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there, there's a lot of Comic-Con news kind of like dropping right now, but like we'll get into that here in a second. So for Justice Con, apparently it is this weekend. Um, it's... Just been over about two months since, you know, we've seen anything Justice League Snyder cut. Um, So it looks like uh, it's a fan-organized event. Justice Con promises to be quite the gathering for both casual onlookers and those uh, those who have long uh, pushed for the Snyder Cut's release. Amongst guests who are set to appear, it looks like Zack Snyder and Deborah Snyder, his wife, are, are set to appear. Uh, a few as a few Justice League cast members as well, including uh, Ray Porter, uh, Ray Fisher, uh, and the storyboard artist uh, Jay uh, Olivia, and the cinematographer as well. So it it looks like there might be some reveals about the Snyder cuts during Justice Con. Um, there's a few details. Uh, so it looks like so Justice Con is, is separate from the DC fandom thing. Yeah, yeah. Here, I'll um, I'm going to link this to you in Discord, um, so you can follow along. That's, the, that's not confusing at all. Having a separate one. Yeah, it, it looks like it's being held on the 25th uh, through the 26th, so two days, and will remain entirely in online events. And it'll start at 7:30 a.m. Pacific time, 10 a.m. I mean, 7.30 a.m. Pacific, 10.30 a.m. Eastern. So that would be 9.30 for us. So it looks like it starts on Saturday. Yeah, Saturday and then Sunday. And it'll go until Sunday. Uh, We'll conclude 3.45 p.m. Or, yeah, 3.45 p.m. Pacific, 6.45 p.m. Eastern. So uh looks like there's a Justice Con YouTube, uh, YouTube channel as well. So that's kind of interesting. Um, I know people are just, you know, clamoring for more Zack Snyder goodies, maybe some new posters, some new footage, new teaser trailer. I know we already got like a super small one. So there's always that. But do you have any thoughts about this at all before we uh, head into the Comic Con? It's just news? weird to have that and the fandom. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I I guess this the only main difference is that this is more of a um, fan organized event versus Warner Brothers and DC themselves. 
So, so it's I mean, I guess. It, yeah, it, yeah. It's <laughs> everyone's gonna be on Skype, <laughs> trying to connect with team each speak. other. <laughs> Teams. <laughs> yes, team speak. Uh, AOL dial dial up internet things of that nature. So <laughs> we shall see. But um, yeah, so let's go on to Comic Con. The uh, at Comic Con at home full schedule, which is happening uh, now. Yes, it is happening right now. It looks like it started earlier today, around uh, one p.m. Eastern, with Star Trek Universe the CBS. It looks All like access. right now it's uh, His Dark Materials and Wonder Woman Superstars Ooh. of Paranormal Ooh. Travel His Channel. Mat- what the hell? His Dark Materials. Okay, okay. I'm I'm kind of intrigued by uh, that. Let's see what we got coming up. The Boys is at uh, five our times. Yeah. So, yeah, 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Central. And it looks like I thought... Oh, Disney's uh, Marvel 616 uh, starts around 7 p.m. Eastern, so 6 p.m. our time. I thought we were supposed to... Oh, yeah, New Mutants. (laughs) It's supposed to be in 30 minutes. So maybe we'll run into some breaking news during the podcast. I don't know. We'll we'll just have to see. Uh, So other than... The Boys, New Mutants, I guess Marvel 616, His Dark Materials. There really isn't anything I'm very interested in, but it looks like they have a very, like the, the schedule is very tight knit. Like they have, like they know what they really want to go for here. Uh, it looks like there's a Crunchyroll industry panel that happened earlier today. Cartoon Network Studios' first look uh, happens about an hour and a half ago. So, I mean, it's, it's a pretty. I mean, I, I like how Game GameSpot put all this together. So it's supposed to be uh, starts today and ends on Sunday as well. So it's there, there. There's just a lot of stuff here. We we just don't have time to get through all of it. But uh, there, there's I feel like there's something here for everyone. Looks like Lovecraft Country has something on Saturday. It looks kind of interesting. That's on uh, HBO Max as well. So. <laughs> Yeah. And a Power Rangers meetup <laughs> on Sunday. Sure. <laughs> it's morphin' time. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, anything else you wanted to cover comic book news before we uh, head into the new normal? Um, I don't think there's... Yeah. Because, yeah, there wasn't much superhero. Like, it's, it's Comic-Con, you know, weekend or whatever. So, I feel like... That's like the main news that we have for Comic Con or superhero news um, yeah. overall, because everything else pretty much got pushed back. So this let's next, just head this into next th- news is quite exciting. This little Star Wars section we got here. Yeah, yeah. I kind of just snuck that in there. You want to take that one? Donald Glover is rumored to be returning to play Lando in an upcoming series. Ooh. Now, will it be? An existing series? Will it be Mando? Will it be his own <laughs> show? Who knows? <laughs> Mando and Lando. That sounds pretty <laughs> badass to me. I wonder. Honestly, would, would the time cool. periods line up with that? Uh, ooh, that's a, well. If Donald Glover is playing a younger Lando, I saw a an entire like Star Wars timeline. Um, ooh. So it, obviously, it would be between A New Hope and Revenge of the Sith, which, ooh, well, let's see. I guess that would kind of fit in because Yoda learns like the secrets to immortality, essentially, and the Clone Wars, which happens um, in between, you know, Episode Two and Episode Three. But ooh. No, I don't know if that I don't know if that would actually line up because Yoda's already dead by Empire Strikes Back or was it a New Hope? It was a New Hope. Yeah. I'm it's it's been a long day at work, I'm sorry. But I don't I'm curious to see how they fit this into the timeline. Yeah. Um, I sure. also saw a theory that um, Billy D. Williams will also be reprising Lando in a future role. So 
With him and Jana from uh, <laughs> Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, that, that could be possible, but I also Let's saw someone... Let's find out who your parents are. Oh, it's me. <laughs> yeah, someone recommended <laughs> that they do, like, a Lando series where Billy D. Williams is, like, telling stories, and it's, like, flashbacks to Donald Glover's Lando. thought that would be pretty cool. Little little Lando story time by the fire. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God, here's my daddy. <laughs> Please tell me. <laughs> Play a game with me, Raymond. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Sorry, I just love the gentleman so much. All right, so our next bit of a uh, little Star Wars news we have here. It looks like Taika Watiti is sharing a uh, shares updates on his uh, Star Wars movie development process. So this actually dropped, uh, I think, earlier today. Uh, he literally said, "We're just writing. We're writing." <laughs> so. He's writing. <laughs> He's writing his the script. It's it's being written probably as we speak, or you know maybe taking a break, have having some coffee. Ha- he also, he also with, mentioned that he fan. finished the Thor: Love and Thunder script. He did, and that he it's did. gonna be nice and romantic. Ooh, I mean it is. It is so, Thor, it is so insane, and, and it's also very romantic. I'm into romances now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that sounds like him. I mean. Maybe he can give us a nice little uh, he's a busy Star guy, Wars in That's it. for sure. He really is. Hopefully, he'll give us a nice little Star Wars romance. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we can ex- uh, <laughs> we kiss some gratitude. Ex- <laughs> yeah, we can explore the uh, feelings that were supposedly there the entire time between Ray and Kylo. Which I will say this to the day I die: it should have been Finn and Ray. They had such great chemistry in The Force Awakens. And then Rose comes in, she kisses him, and then they don't even mention it in the next movie. I mean, it's not like Rose is in, is in episode nine anyway. She's in it for literally like a minute and a half. So <laughs> it's just, it's frustrating. But I still love the movie, the good and the bad. So, all right, let's head on over to, we have some Christopher Nolan uh, news here. You want to take this one? Or, I, I feel like it's, we're being it's not a dead even horse. <laughs> it's not. Tennis been delayed. Well, there it's a good go. thing I didn't make him the, uh, <laughs> the headline again. <laughs> it's probably the eighth time we've said it. Yeah. Delays till August. And it's like, well, if people keep, if people wear their masks, we won't have to worry about this now, would we? Labor it's, Day in the U.S. is the plan. Yeah, Labor Day, and then August 26th, my sister's birthday, internationally. So, I don't see that happening. It's just going to be another delay. Because, there. I mean, yes, there are a lot of people wearing the masks, but there's also a good majority of people still aren't wearing their masks. And it's just very, very frustrating. <laughs> I absolutely hate it. But that's fine. Um, let's move on to the next news story here. I think you have found this one. Uh, Julia Roberts, Denzel Washington are to star in a Netflix thriller uh, titled Leave the World Behind. Uh, looks it's like a good, com- good duo. It, yeah, it is a really nice duo. Uh, I'm sorry. There's like an ad popping in my way. Ugh. Ah, so. It looks like the Mr. Robot creator, Sam Ismail, will write and direct the adaptation of the upcoming book. Did not know it was a book. So, I mean, Hollywood is running out of ideas. So let's make adaptations of everyone else's books. So that's cool. But it looks like, um, ooh, this is the first time that Julia Julia Roberts and Denzel Washington will reunite since 1993's The Pelican Brief. Wow. It's been a while. 27 years. 27 years. It's amazing. 17. No, 27. 27. Yeah, 27. It was like, yeah, I'm... (laughs) Yeah, because I'm like, I was born in 92, so it's definitely either 26 or 27. We're getting old. Yes, we are. <laughs> I actually saw one of those, um, I'm not sure if you saw it on uh, uh, Twitter. It was like one of those light bright commercials. And oh I was my. like, oh my God, it's been a while since I've seen any of this. It was like a rainbow color one. I think I tweeted it. I was like, this definitely shows my age because I definitely remember this. But uh, any thoughts, uh, concerns about this uh, duo, this pair? Could be good. We'll see. (laughs) 
Yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. See if it gets delayed or just pumped out on VOD. So we'll see. This, um, this upcoming news probably made you chuckle a little bit. It did make me chuckle. We, were we not just talking about this during the Old Guard review? Like, I could have swore that we were. And I had the same conversation earlier with a friend because she has all of the Harry Potter movies on DVD. And I asked her, uh, how come she hasn't bought, like, the Blu-ray set yet? And she just hasn't because it, it's whatever. But <laughs> all the eight... All eight Harry Potter films are going to be removed from HBO Max on August 25th. I just don't understand what's going on with HBO Max. I love all them and them. I hate them. All, all of them. them. All all eight. All seven books. Part one and two of Deathly Hallows. All eight of them are leaving. And I don't even know the reason why. It's, it's literally been... A little bit over, like, what, five weeks? Well, they have about, people have about, like, five weeks to binge this. But it's, like, again, I already have all of these movies on Blu-ray. So, like, that wasn't an entire, like, the reason why, like, I, I love HBO Max. I know I'm going all over the place. I love HBO Max. They really just need to, like, <laughs> keep content that's theirs on their streaming service but again you are at their mercy if you sign up for the streaming service so how many people got pissed at friends got was moved off netflix you're like oh my gosh this is terrible it's like well i mean you know contracts end netflix doesn't own this i mean it's on hbo max now for god knows how long i don't know this is exactly the same reason why i have all the studio ghibli films on blu-ray the same thing with avatar and legend of Korra that's supposed to be coming out on netflix around i think august 14th so it's like everyone's like, oh my god avatar last airbender legend of Korra is coming on netflix i've i've had both of these blu-ray sets for like a year and it's like nobody knew about it it's like i so like the thrill for me is gone but like i'm not gonna miss it once i'm not gonna miss the harry potter movies when they come off of HBO Max personally, but it does suck for those who don't have the Blu-ray set. But I mean, if you love the movies that much, you might as well just buy the Blu-ray set. I think it's definitely worthy of complaining, especially when it's like within a month, like some of these services have been doing, taking stuff off like the same day. Peacock and they took off. That. Mm. Sorry, go ahead. I'm going to cut you off. Yeah. Peacock did it. The same day they took off stuff, like when that happens, that that shouldn't happen. Like it should. We, need, we should hold them accountable for that. I I totally agree. And like HBO Max is like pro- is is my favorite streaming service. But I mean, again, like I said, this doesn't affect me, so it's like whatever. Like I'm okay with it. But I mean, who's to say about Lord of the Rings? Or they they removed a few DC films that are supposed to be coming off. We talked about it a few weeks ago. As well, and it's it's just like I don't get this. Like, what is the point of even putting it on there? Especially for Peacock, literally like taking off movies like the day of. Be like, oh, look at all this great content for like reviewers to go on and you know rate their streaming service and then take it off. It's like the equivalent of having like a Call of Duty game with no microtransactions for like the first two months. Um, during the game's release, and then after it, you know, receives all of its criticism and the scores and the reviews that people have been giving it, that's when they start implementing those microtransactions. It's like the same thing with HBO Max and Peacock. It's like, oh, we have all this great content for like a few weeks. People watch it, they review it on their on their podcasts or the YouTube channels, and then it's like, oh, we're going to take it off like a few weeks later. It's like, but why? Why was it even on there to begin with? if you're just going to take it off in the long run and who's to say when or if they come back. So yeah, it sucks. Hate, yeah, it sucks, but you know, it doesn't suck. Game of Thrones prequel for the house of dragons has begun casting. Very, very excited about this one, Devin. Very excited. I've been waiting for some house of dragon news all, all, uh, all year. Practically, uh, looks like they are moving forward uh, forward with the House of Dragons prequel, which is very good. Um, it looks like the network has begun casting uh, for its eagerly anticipated series. 
Uh, it is based off of uh, George R. R. Martin's Fire and Blood book, uh, the history of House Targaryen that is set 300 years before the events of Game of Thrones, which I have the book. I started reading it. It is it's just like a wealth of knowledge. And I absolutely love it. And I need to... I want. I would like to complete it prior to this coming out because we really don't have a um, a set release date. But the book Fire and Blood covers about uh, the first 150 years and includes the rise and fall of a lot of the many leaders in Westeros. So it's not clear which time period they're going to be focusing on, um, especially. But uh, sources are saying that the the Dance of Dragons, which is the Targaryen Civil War, um, is going to be that that was occasionally referenced in the show will be a part of the House of Dragons, which I think that's probably what they would um, they they would uh, focus on. Um, so it's, it just depends. I, I don't want to get too much into it cause I know Devin doesn't really like it and I don't have any, anyone else to talk Game of Thrones with. So that's fine. Um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm just very excited for this. You know, there it's, it shows progress, you know, they're moving forward and just have to wait and see, uh, what's in store, who, who they cast. So I'm, I'm down for new old random, you know, unknown actors, actresses. So let's, uh, get that thing rolling. And uh, really quick, uh, as I mentioned before, the Avatar, uh, the Avatar sequel, uh, Legend of Korra, is getting a summer premiere on Netflix alongside um, Avatar The Last Airbender, which has been out for a few weeks. So it's kind of the uh, the next Avatar's story after um, Aang's uh, death. Sorry, you know he eventually dies. So <laughs> there's that. But do you want to take this next piece of news, Devin? I sure do. Dave Franco. <laughs> Very classic Franco brother. Will be playing Vanilla Ice in an upcoming biopic on the 1990s rapper. I, I, I see the resemblance, actually. It's very random, but you get that hair right, I think you can pull it off. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, I'm not... A big Vanilla Ice fan, but I don't—I don't know how many people are. I mean, it's just one song. I don't either. Uh, we actually one song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally, I only know that one song. Uh, we do have a little bit of breaking news here, I guess. Uh, Disney. Uh, well, no, we—I guess we kind of talked about this. Uh, they postponed the French Dispatch, the French Dispatch, um, as well as other upcoming titles, but. Yeah, just wanted to kind of throw that in there. Someone quoted saying, Disney films, no thanks. Well, you're a jackass, but <laughs> it's okay. It's totally fine. Um, some of them look pretty cool, but it is what it is. All right, I just wanted to mention that really quick. Um, do you also want to take this next one as well, since I kind of talked for like three topics straight? <laughs> Taron Egerton. Is cast in a Tetris movie. This one was surprising <laughs> to you. It's a he's, it's a Tetris movie about the complicated history of the game. Um, if it's more of a history, like of how the game came to be, like a documentary. Yeah, he's, he's type. not playing the long Tetris piece or something. He's playing well, the uh, guy okay. who like. I'm just making sure. Yeah, <laughs> the guy behind it all. That it, it is kind of, think, it is kind of an interesting story because Tetris is like the biggest game of all time, and that's kind of interesting to dive into. And as, as we saw on the Xbox, showcase. It's, it's still here 30, <laughs> 40 years later. They're doing a, another Tetris game, yeah. So, I, if, yeah, if it's about the game's complicated history, that is something I'd be very interested in. I, I was like. Okay, you know, we have Emoji Movie, like Angry Birds Movie, what's next, Tetris. But yeah, if, if it's something more informative, I'm on board for it as well. So, um, yeah. Ter- Taron Edgerton, great, great actor, got snubbed, got robbed during the Oscars. Robbed, yeah. I tell you, robbed. Should have won. Should have won. Rocket Man. Rocket Man. 
All right. So uh, it looks like this is a little bit of a random piece of news, but I guess we're, we can try to figure out which one we are. Uh, looks like Hulu has identified the four type of streaming consumers. There is a therapeutic streamer who uh, streams content to decompress and reflect. There's the classic streamer that watches at set times with family and friends. There's the indulgent uh, streamer, the binge mode, more likely to live alone. And the curated streamer, uh, streaming content to create a cultural conversation. So, Devin, I ask you, my good man, <coughs> which one do you identify with the most? Or which two? Because I feel like I, I identify I think, with yeah, two. Yeah, I think it's two. I'm going to go with uh, therapeutic and curated. Ooh, Th- those okay. would be my two, I think. Because obviously curated, we watch stuff on streaming services in order to have something to review. So that's definitely what a big one. we do. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, not this week. Not this week. We're gonna be doing some Xbox talk this week. But yeah, there, there, there's like literally nothing coming. Well, there's the rental, but I don't feel like renting the rental. <laughs> no, don't want to have a rental. Rental. No, not at all. <laughs> no double renting here. But I guess for me, it would be, I mean, I don't live alone, but I do like to binge shows. Um, so I guess it would be indulgent and curate, cur- curated for me. Um, I do have one roommate, but he's barely here. Uh, we work completely opposite work schedules. So it's kind of like I live alone. I'm alone yeah. now. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, I and I, I guess the third one I wouldn't say classic. I guess I would I would definitely identify more with indulgent, curated, and therapeutic. But if I were to choose two, it would probably be indulgent and curated for sure. But yeah, yeah. Uh, you want to take this next bit of news? Grey's Anatomy. You know, you're a Ooh. big giant fan. Sixteen seasons going strong. Nope. <laughs> I, mean, I haven't watched a single episode. <laughs> I think me neither. I think every female in the country has I'm seen all sure of they them. Have. They'll be excited <laughs> to learn that Grey's Anatomy will tackle coronavirus pandemic in the upcoming season 17. Very topical. Cool. <laughs> awesome. I mean, it's it's great, you know, for for it being like when people say, you know, like like I feel like this is a political topic because not in political as in presidency or the government, but political as in what is actually going on in our world today. Because that's really what politics is technically all about, at least I think so, from what I've read and from what I've experienced. It's not just, you know, presidencies and government laws and all of that. Uh, jibber jabber but it is about the times that we are living in so I think it's great that they're actually cov- tackling an entire season dealing with the co- corona uh, the COVID pandemic or the pandemic as people just like to call it so here's, yeah, they, to, I mean, here's a there's a few shows that are trying to keep things up to date I know Brooklyn Nine-Nine is going to tackle police brutality which is obviously mm. very very topical so it's important for these shows to Stay up, stay up to date, stay with the times. Yeah, they, you don't want to be it's a show that people are watching and just are cringing at because it's material that just isn't appropriate <laughs> for the times. Right. <laughs> no bueno. No bueno. <laughs> so our last bit of news here. Did you put this the- in here for Seth? I did put this in here for Seth. Seth, if you're listening, it, it is. Uh, it is kind. Of, I think I thought it was pretty interesting when I read it. Yeah, um, it looks like Mortal Kombat star uh, Lewis Tan says uh, they did not hold back on the fatalities in the rated R uh, film Skull and Crossbones. Uh, the reboot is set to release in uh, 2021, so we'll just have to wait. Yeah, and see. I, lo- I love this quote. There were some days on set that I felt sick. That's, <laughs> that's what you love to hear. Hopefully, I wonder they if that's those, how those yeah, fatalities want- nice and nice and gory. Honestly, have you seen the uh, new Mortal Kombat um, animated movie? No. 
It, apparently, it's very good, and Seth watched it, and he absolutely loved it. For those of you listening, Seth is our one of our like good friends. Uh, he, he loves Mortal Kombat to death. He's the only one in our friend group who actually is good at side-scrolling fighting games, minus Smash Brothers, because I'll beat him in that. I've been practicing. <laughs> but... Yeah, that pretty much does it for our new normal news of what's going on. I actually, actually on. did want to add one more that came Ooh, out go ahead. a little bit ago. So uh, this Tom Cruise movie that got picked up by Universal. It's Tom Cruise and Doug Lyman. They're shooting an action movie, which will have major sequences shot in space. Did you hear about this? No. I, sen- I, I, sent, it, I sent it in the group chat, but... Or in the Twitter oh, chat. Oh, you know, I, I remember you sending it. I never really looked into it, though. So they're filming in space, but I thought it was interesting that um, they refused to sell the film to any streaming services because they wanted to have a strong preference to roll out the film as a splashy theatrical event. I thought that was interesting. Refusing st- streaming services. Huh. Um, hmm. Interesting. <laughs> I mean, the Tom Cruise is an old school guy, so he probably does want the theater. Experience, theater event. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm surprised Martin Scorsese put his stuff on Netflix. Yeah, he's all against it. No, that was Steven Spielberg that was against it, wasn't he? I'm Both. pretty sure. Although, yeah, probably all, all the all the boomers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also, how, how are they going to film in space? That's Kind of crazy. I don't know. I I mean, I guess that would be like the ultimate Tom Cruise thing to do. Like, you know, he's been doing his own stunt for years, and it's like, we're going to take your expertise and your skills to a new level. We're going to film in space. It's just, I mean, yeah, it would be really cool to see, but like, I'm not about that life. Like, do you, I mean, you would have to, do you ma- imagine the amount of money that you would have to pay someone to film in space? Tom, Tom Cruise is probably getting like 500 million for this one movie. He would probably be getting like the entire movie's budget and then some. That is like, you, there's like safety net pay and just, wow. Cool. I mean, I, I I don't know how I feel yeah, well, about it. It looks like Universal is going to be picking up the tab. Yeah, especially yeah, with um, Fast, uh, was it Fast 9 that's coming out? It's 9, right? They sure love space I, in their movies. <laughs> it's all about space. It's all about family and space. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Whatever. I mean, good for Tom Cruise if this happens. I'm very interested, but... I guess that is the next uh, step in movie making and filming. (laughs) But uh, let's get into some uh, gaming news. It's been a big week for gaming news. Well, today the uh, Xbox showcase happened. Uh, We're going to touch on it a little bit here. I don't want to get too much. We should probably save. Yeah. Actually, let's just... Well, yeah, the Xbox showcase came out um, and we're we're actually going to instead of reviewing a movie this week, we're actually going to cover the event. We're going to do a recap on Sunday with uh, our friend uh, Brett from uh, BAM Tube TV. So uh, I don't want to get into it because if I do, I'm just going to start rambling. So um, it looks like we have some PlayStation 5 news here. (laughs) It uh, looks like PS5 demo stations are starting to go up in some stores, it looks like. Interesting. Uh, I'm guessing Sony, it's all overseas. Yeah, because I haven't seen any. <laughs> uh, Sony has clarified to IGN. Um, this comes from comic book gaming, but uh, Sony has clarified to IGN that uh, these demo stations are not uh, related to the PS5. However... Um, <laughs> decline to clarify what they're for. <laughs> so it's for the PlayStation Five. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, looks like the original PS Five demos were starting to go up in some stores, and PlayStation uh, suggesting suggesting that PlayStation would have some big announcement coming up soon. 
Remember uh, the good but, old days of going to the video game section of Walmart and just playing on whatever system they had plugged in? Yeah, and having like your neck. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't recover for a few days after that. <laughs> Staring up at the, at the screen. Five more minutes, Mom. Yes, I, I do remember those days. They were fantastic because they really gave you, like, whatever, what, whatever happened to demos, Devin? What happened to the demos? But I guess some, uh, some breaking news looks like the first few minutes of uh, the New Mutants was just released on Twitter. <gasps> Ooh, really? Interesting. I'll have to watch that later. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> people are like, why? <laughs> A lot of people like are getting hyped about it. Yeah. <laughs> They really are. I'm looking at literally everyone's tweets. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> so people are saying, like, why are you showing me, showing me the opening of a movie if I can't watch it on VOD? <laughs> That's funny. Wow. Um, it is set to release August 28th theatrically. Good luck. <laughs> things, are, same, things will be all fine in a month. Movie theaters will be open. Right, just no one's gonna be sick. Exactly, and on and all and really quick also that uh, Avatar Star Wars schedule, uh, everything's bl- delayed by a year. But I don't think anyone would really care too much. So cool, first five first few minutes like we could do like a five minute movie review. <laughs> it's the first That'll two cool. minutes. For oh, it's the first two minutes. A two minute movie movie review that will last like maybe five minutes. Um, but it also looks like really quick. Uh, this is Xbox related, but it's not Xbox Game Pass related. No, it's not Xbox Showcase related, the event that happened earlier today. It is Game Pass related. It looks like Xbox isn't planning to bring Xbox Game Pass to Nintendo consoles or PlayStation I consoles. I never thought they would. That sounded very strange. Well, people were thinking b- because Xbox is doing that, uh, the their X, the project X Cloud, that it would give people the ability to, you know, since Xbox is going the way of they want people to play their games. It's not really about the hardware and PS and never really has been just as a little, you know, tidbit for our uh, showcase uh, recap coming up on Sunday. But, um, you know, they want to get... They're, they want to get these games on as many screens as possible. So um, <laughs> it looks like Microsoft just has no plans to currently bring Xbox Game Pass to, place to Nintendo or PlayStation consoles. Because, I mean, why would you? They, they have their own ecosystem. If you want to be a part of their ecosystem, you have to buy into their ecosystem. Whether that be an Xbox or a PC, you have to buy into their ecosystem. That's the way it's always been. So... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have, and we'll have a lot Spence, more to talk about on Sunday. Yeah, we'll have a lot more. So I'm I'm going to stop myself there. So that pretty much concludes this episode. Of a nice, our, nice short one. Yeah, it really was. I feel like we're getting really getting the hang of this. It's been really awesome. So as we said, uh, yeah, no review this week. We are going to be uh, reviewing or recapping the Xbox uh, show game showcase. This coming up Sunday, so keep a lookout for that. Um, and we have, oh my gosh, it comes out next month. I mean, next week, next week. Um, Umbrella. Umbrella Academy. Exciting. Yeah, Umbrella Academy Season 2. So we're going to be reviewing Binge that the that. following Sunday. That's going to be awesome. Very excited for that. We got we to binge it all weekend, Devin. We got, <laughs> we, we, we got, we got a deadline. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, it, it probably won't be more than like 10 episodes. So I'm probably just going to stay in the entire day on Saturday and just binge it all. Probably start it on Friday evening after work. So, all right. That pretty much concludes our episode, our new show episode, a Headline Hot Takes here on the Film Optics YouTube channel. Again, we are brought to you by the Drive-In Podcast Network. Go on to Music City Drive-In and check out all the other podcasts that we have that are underneath underneath uh, the uh, Drive-In Podcast umbrella with us. We got sports, we got music, we got commentaries, so it's a lot of fun. And we got Oscar um, 
Oscar talk from the previous Oscar years on the Music City Driving podcast. They pretty much go through um, every passing year and do their own little, you know, who should have won uh, opinion style type podcast. So definitely check them out as well. And my name was Chris. My name is ugh, my name is Christian. And that was Devin, my co-host. And we will see you guys in the next one. Peace.